Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 60 Six Day Challenge 9.0. And today is day 17. So today we're going to continue our training inside of the Smart Plans applet, and I really want to focus on one very particular Smart Plan. What I think is one of the most powerful tools, the one of the secret weapons we have as KW agents. That's our monthly neighborhood nurture Smart Plan. So we're going to dive into that, take a look at what that looks like. How do we add contacts to it? What are neighborhoods, etc.? So join me in clicking on our Smart Plans applet, diploma icon, left-hand side, fourth one down. Let's clear out all of our blue boxes. We added the monthly neighborhood nurture previously. So just a reminder, you can get that from the library inside of the Keller Williams section. There is a bi-weekly version, happens every 14 days, and then there's a monthly version that happens every 31 days. Um, I'm typically using 31 days in most of my business and coach most of my agents to use that. If you have someone who's really hot to trot that really wants to know what's happening in the neighborhood, 14 days may work. I uh, just got to make sure that there's updates happening every two weeks, right? <clears throat> so let's dive in. These blue boxes just want to keep on coming back. Here we go. So we know to edit the monthly neighborhood nurture, we're gonna click on the pencil. We're just gonna take a look. And really there's not much to look at inside of the plan. This is a plan that sends out a monthly neighborhood update email, then it waits 30 days and then it does it again. So it never ends. This is a plan that once you put somebody on it, it's sort of a set it and forget it sort of plan. So what sort of content does it deliver? Well, Keller Williams has an exclusive partnership with Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a sort of a social network platform that provides, uh, you know, uh, an opportunity for people that live inside of that neighborhood to post and have updates and neighborhood events, etc. In my neighborhood, the content's not amazing. It's usually, you know, lost cats whose dog crapped in my yard, gunshots or fireworks, that kind of stuff. But if you think about the next door neighborhood data, next door neighborhoods have to be formed by the people that live in them. And there are 200,000 plus neighborhoods across the nation. Keller Williams bought the right to that geographic data and the names of those neighborhoods. So how does that impact us? Well, when you put a contact into command and you add an address, the first thing that happens is command wants to verify that address with Google Make sure it's a legit address, that it's recognizable, that it's got a longitude and latitude, and it can find the pin on the map. And then it says, hey, next door, do you have a neighborhood inside or surrounding this actual address? So you can see here's our fake character, Peggy Hill. We've got a fake address put in here for her with a fake city, but it, it's still, it pulled up Rainy Street District inside of Austin, and you can see that's the next door neighborhood that this contact was assigned to. If we go to John Arbuckle, this is an example where there was no neighborhood found, right? Because most of these are fake addresses. Um, it may only be Peggy, oh, no. Nope. So Peter Griffin, Stewie's dad, we've got a fake address here, but it still managed to find a neighborhood there in South Elmwood. So these are, and if we go in, we can actually preview, right? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this neighborhood on the map. So South Elmwood, I can go to add neighborhood and then find on map. And it's gonna show me where it believes that address pin is. Now, do you see all these shapes on the map? These are all next door neighborhoods that are filling in. So we're diving in here to Rhode Island, just outside of Cranston. And you can see these are all next door neighborhoods surrounding this, what appears to be an actual address, but on a fictional character. So this address is inside the South Elmwood next door neighborhood. The cool thing is with these updates is that we can say, hey, if you'd like hyper local market content about South Elmwood, here you go. But I can also subscribe, in this case Stewie, to some additional neighborhoods. Maybe Stewie wants to know what's happened in Belmont Park or Eden Park or Auburn, right? Here's neighborhoods all surrounding where they live and now not only have I subscribed them to one neighborhood the one they live in but additional neighborhoods in and around them so I can click on save and now you can see that here oh it's Peter not Stewie Peter has been subscribed to four different neighborhoods <clears throat> well Marty what if I don't have an address but I know roughly where they live or better yet 
Marty, I don't know where they live, but they're a guest at my open house. Marty, I don't know where they live, but they inquired about a specific property, one maybe that I have listed or they found online. Well, isn't there a good chance that they're probably interested in what's happening in that specific neighborhood? They either live there and they're curious about home values or they want to live there. So in that case, if you don't actually know where they live, but you have the address for the open house, in this case, let's just say <clears throat> it's this address, you can see once we put that address in, the pin moves, right? So now we've got a new map and we can start to zoom in and new next door neighborhoods start to show up. And you can see that we can now subscribe this person to a new next door neighborhood, right? So if you're asking your clients, hey, where do you live? They're automatically subscribed. Are there any other neighborhoods you might be interested? Any neighborhoods nearby that you'd like to keep track of? Are there any neighborhoods you would love to move to? Do you have any investment properties where you'd like to keep up with the property value of your investment property? Uh, what about family members? Do you have parents, maybe aging parents that may at some point uh, need to sell their property or you're gonna be responsible for that property? Would you like to know the value of homes that are being listed in that area? So these are all different ways where you can assign a next door neighborhood to a specific contact. Now, once they have been subscribed to that neighborhood, we do need to add them to the smart plan. So adding contacts to a smart plan can happen in multiple ways. One, right now we're inside Peter's contact card. I can come in and click on smart plans. I can say add to smart plan and I can say neighborhood nurture and there it is. And I can select to add to that smart plan right now or I can start that smart plan at a specific future date. I would just click on our TCPA disclaimer and click confirm. Now Peter Griffin is on that smart plan. What if I want to add more than one contact at a time to the smart plan, right? I really like this idea. I didn't know about the smart plan. Maybe I want to add John and Sheldon and Sabrina and Monica, all of our fictional characters to the same smart plan. Well, I can now go in and add to smart plan. I'm going to be using our bulk action dropdown, right? We referenced that bulk action dropdown when we were doing our contacts training. Now you can see I've got the monthly neighborhood nurture and looks like John isn't actually subscribed to a neighborhood. So Command is pretty smart with regards to the monthly neighborhood nurture. And it's gonna say, hey, we can't actually put John on this plan. So we can remove that contact and then decide, do we wanna start John, all three of the remaining contacts immediately, all three at a future date, or we can even say, hey, Command, spread it out. Let's stagger start them. So let's just have one per day get added to the plan. So in this case, John would get added today, and then, oh, John doesn't have a neighborhood. Sheldon would get added today, and then Sabrina would get added tomorrow, and then Monica would get added the next day. That's what stagger start looks like. You can also add contacts from within the Smart Plans applet itself. So if we scroll down, let's close out our boxes here, and we scroll down to the neighborhood nurture, you can see we already have three people on the plan. I can click this add contact button here, and that's going to allow me to add people to the plan as well. I can either choose to select all, and that's going to at least give me the first 10. I can also filter this list by specific tags, or I can just go through and check off who I want to add to that actual plan. What does the monthly neighborhood nurture actually look like when the client gets it? I'm glad you asked. So excuse the AOL mail. Yes, I still have an AOL address. Here's what that smart plan looks like. So one thing to note, it does say it's from me, but it does have this agent, mailer.kw. I've had agents ask if they can change that. You can't, that's actually your KWU ID. And the reason they have it this way is so they can track how many emails you're sending out. Remember you get a max of 5,000 per month, unless you subscribe to more. But more importantly, it actually tracks your open rate, your click-through rate, your unsubscribe rate, um, your bounce back rate, all of those types of things are available in reports and we'll cover that at a future challenge. But this is what that uh, email looks like from the Neighborhood Nurture. It's gonna say the same thing every time, hi, and then the contact's first name. Check out these updates from a neighborhood you follow. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. So you can see personally, I've subscribed myself to Village Green West, but remember, you can subscribe yourself to multiple neighborhoods. It's still just one email. So now you can see what it looks like. I've also got myself subscribed to the Falls at Green Meadows, and I can see what that looks like, Fawn Lake, Pine Lakes, and then Cane Island. 
What happens inside each one of these neighborhoods? Well, basically it's gonna say how many properties are for sale, how many properties are currently pending, what's the average list price, days on market, average price per square foot, and then depending if you're in a disclosure or non-disclosure state, you may or may not have sold data. Texas is a non-disclosure state, so we don't offer up the sold data. But then you can see you've got neighborhood properties. So here are the properties that are currently for sale. And you can even click on Explore the Falls, and it's gonna give that client the opportunity to get a neighborhood page with even more additional data. The cool thing is it takes them to your website. So this is now my agent site and a specific page on my agent site. We're gonna get into agent sites later on in the challenge, but now you can see here, right, what you've got. Here are the listings, average days on market, average price point, all of that information available. They can see the properties, nearby schools. They can look at transit and commute times, depending on if they're looking to drive, bike, or walk. And we've got some additional neighborhoods. And then of course, all the additional information about my actual site. So pretty cool tool. I would highly recommend every one of your contacts in your database be on this monthly neighborhood nurture. Even if they're not looking to buy or sell, they're probably always curious about what's happening in their neighborhood. It's a very powerful tool and it can lead to conversations when you least expect it. That's it for today, guys. The monthly neighborhood nurture, one of Keller Williams' secret weapons that you can use to generate new leads. Come back tomorrow. We'll sort of start wrapping up our smart plans training and then move on from there. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.